Dart Podcast 431. Just makes you all fuzzy inside. So was it all lube? What kind of lube? Okay, are you ready? But he's got a. But in the picture that he's got on, it looks like he's got a bear. I got to see lots of bears playing. What? You mean you didn't have your podcast equipment with you? It's actually plants killing zombies. Would it be better to go there and then get sick afterwards? <laughs> well, I don't know. It depends on what you get sick <laughs> with. Me and James have a lot in common. We're both tasty wise. The Matt Bear problem. Don selling his thong. Having it auctioned off, I think you got $150 just for a stall. Your question of the week. The second <laughs> question of the week. Oh, really? You want instant gratification? In yeah, those pairs get around. Everybody knows everybody in this world. Alright. Welcome, everyone, to Bear Podcast. I am Nard. And I am Dave. Yes, welcome to episode 431. Wow. And uh, right now... Uh, Ray is still busy. Yeah. Moving. Sorry, everybody. You yeah. Have to deal with me another week. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave is, uh, is the understudy right now. The understudy. Ray's understudy. Ray's understudy. I don't know if I could fill his, his big <laughs> shoes or, or not. Yeah, so. We will be wordier than, than Ray. <laughs> probably. Probably, yes. So, yeah, we are here. We're, right now, we're flashing pictures from uh, the Gay World Series. And uh, because I was in Minneapolis for a week. It was the Gear World Series, and uh, we had a lot of fun. It's my team dirty. Yeah. I really wish I had gone now. I tried, but just schedule-wise didn't work. Yeah. But seeing I, your hot pictures of all these hot bears. The hot bears. I wish I had gone now. <laughs> hot bears. You know what, what? The problem there, when I was playing, I get distracted. <laughs> mm. Oh, my God, it's so hot. That's you know? not good when not. Uh, like really hard <laughs> softball is hard softball. Hard, this is coming hard. at your face at 80 miles an hour off a bat. Yeah. You should pay attention. I do. I am. Yeah. That's why I think that's why I was in the dugout most of the time. But I, I, I was, they made me run, though. So. Were there a lot of injuries because of this? No. In the World Series? The Other injuries people? that happened uh-huh. with our team were not because of the game. Oh, uh, was it? One was because he played kickball before coming to Minneapolis. What? He broke his arm, so he didn't fly to Minneapolis at all. One uh, was still just practicing, you know, practice throws, yeah. warm-up throws, and hit his face. Yeah, I mean, even if, yeah, and then broke his nose. He, so he broke his nose. Didn't he have a glove? But he did, but it just that it it it, uh, it ricocheted somehow. It, oh. it was a bad angle. Is your team any good? I mean, you're in the World Series. We were pretty good. Hey, we were pretty good. <laughs> uh, I, we won all our, our pool games. Okay. It's just that catching is a big component of the game, isn't it? Yeah, yes. <laughs> but we won all the pool games. It's just that when we when when we went into the uh, into the um, uh, tournament itself, we won the first game and then lose lose. Oh, okay. Because the two the next right. two teams were pretty good. Yeah. So. And you were too busy watching them to play. Yeah, I was well. <laughs> too busy. <laughs> it's all your fault, Maynard. Yeah, I know. Uh, we lost because I was distracted by the bears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was a fun, fun weekend. So, uh, yeah, we were there. And not only that, Mike and I went to Fargo. We went to Fargo. I know. That's awesome. Yeah, I was posting pictures about that. Fargo, if you guys uh, haven't watched Fargo by the Cohen brothers, you got to watch it because it's kind of how it is in the winter. But it's not winter right now. It's it summer. It's a very cool, quirky movie. Very yeah. quirky movies. So we went to Fargo just because of that. Also, it's my partner's uh, 50th uh, state. I know, I'm very jealous. Yeah. I, I know he's got a few years on me. Yeah. But I'm down to three, and that's one of my three. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it, it's, it's a good um, uh, accomplishment for Mike because it's, you know, he has to you know, check off one item in his bucket list now. Yeah. That's a good bucket list item. Yeah. <laughs> three more. I think I have good four more him. to go. Congrats, Mike. Yeah. Uh, and then we went there. We went to. We were staying in a town called Roseville, so that's where we stayed. And then, uh, yeah, we 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 had fun. Oh, I visited a couple of friends. Um, yeah, John and Joseph. Shout out John and Joseph. They uh, they also live in Minneapolis. They invited me in uh, to. They have a small gathering, and mm-hmm. we watched um, some uh, the their China China pictures. They went to China. Oh, cool! For an uh, educational. Uh, EF, what does EF mean? Educational uh, oh. F something. <laughs> I forgot. But they were there for... Foundation? For foundation, educational. Oh. I don't know. I, I can't remember. But yeah, they were there for uh, uh, for 10 days and and uh, it, was a, it was a good, it was a good um, 
they, they they showed lots of good pictures. Oh, I heard like you that. met other other podcasters as well. Yes, that's right. Oh, tell us about that. I met up with the B Talk boys. Okay, cool. So I saw Shannon, Jason, Joel, and Kurt. And of course, Kurt is about two nards tall, if you guys know about <laughs> them. And uh, we were at the Eagle Ball, so that was fun. Uh, we, yeah, e the Eagle Ball. They don't call it the Eagle. It's, you have to call it Eagle Ball because really? I think the Eagle is something else. It doesn't look like uh, an Eagle, really. No. But it looks like an e Yeah, so they name it Eagle Ball. Never been. And, yeah, and, and then there was an underwear party. Mm hmm but that was fun because well, fun you know in a in a way but when you got there it's people who were there is not really the people that uh, my type so so no bears at the underwear party there are no there are no bears uh, <laughs> there are no bears so waste every, of an underwear party yeah we took off your clothes you have to go in no thongs no uh jock straps you have to have underwear really um, yeah why do they care i don't know because There's well for one thing think about it i, I so like I would, I would understand. Maybe I don't know. I, I would understand jock straps because your ass is exposed, but okay. with thongs, I guess they don't like too much cheek. No jock straps at this sports event. No, <laughs> that's right. Come no, on. it's not a sports event. It's just I, the well, eagle. <laughs> I guess, but I mean, that was the whole weekend. There was kind of centered yeah. around the Gay World Series and softball. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we did that. And then I text messaged you. Remember, I was text messaging you. Where is the Larry Craig stall? <laughs> yeah. Where is the Larry Craig stall? Some of you may know I, I travel a lot. And uh, I'm also a big Foursquare guy. Oh, and God. I was in the Minneapolis St. Paul uh, MSP airport one day. And I was just look, I was going to check in at the airport. And I noticed that one said the Larry Craig Memorial Bathroom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I had to find it and check in there. So when Maynard was going there, I was like, you have to check in at the Larry Craig Memorial yeah. bathroom. So you'll see, there's a picture I think you got. Oh, right? yeah, I took a picture. <laughs> Actually, I did go there. I'm, we're not sure, right? But as far as we know, yeah. it's, I think it's, it's in Terminal 1. C8. Okay, that's what I went. C7, C8, somewhere around it's there. It's really isolated. It's really isolated. The, Is it? Yeah, we, if you look at it, if you go inside, you turn right. And no one's in that. No one's in those in those gates. Yeah. And it's really I told to steer clear these days. I know, right? Doing undercover stings. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there. You know, I took a video. I was tapping my foot. Nothing's happening. <laughs> cool. But it was fun. It was a fun trip. So yeah, Minneapolis. Thank you so much, Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, for a great week of vacation for me and Mike and for my team and for my friends and. Uh, Connecting with uh, all the new friends. Thank cool. you. All right. So how about you? You've been busy yourself, uh, Dave. I have. I've been all over. Uh, I was in San Diego, which was cool. I think I mentioned it on uh, pod, on the 430 podcast. number four. Episode 430. Episode 430. Um, I went to see a good friend, uh, um, Terrence uh, V. in San Diego, who is the bartender at Our Gang Eatery, which is Rich Sweeney. The hot bear from Top Chef Five's restaurant in Oh really? Yeah. Worked there? Okay. And I met Rich. He came over and hung out with us a little bit at the table. They're they're really good friends cool. too. And um yeah, Rich is great. He's a really nice guy, real real sweet guy. Um and uh yeah, and I'm friends on Facebook and he's he's just a cool guy. So it was, uh, it was kind of fun. It's always good to meet celebrity chefs. I'm, I'm kind of a foodie, so that's always fun to, <laughs> to bump in and you know hobnob with those guys a little bit. And mm -hmm. then we went to uh, another place for dessert called D-Bar, which is owned by another celebrity chef, uh, oh. Keegan Gerhard, who's also on Food Network. Gosh. So he does that Food Network Challenge show. I think he's on there a lot as a judge. Um, so, is he a yeah. bear? No, he's not so much a bear. He's Rich, kind of a big guy. He's Rich tall. Big, oh, okay. He used to be um, a, a bicycle guy, like Olympic, that good. Like, And then he decided... And now he's a cook. No, yeah, he, well... He, sorry, he's a chef. Something <laughs> happened where he was trying to figure out how to eat better for, for training for the Olympics. Oh. And he realized that this was more of a passion to him than, than bicycle bicycling was. Cycling. I should cycling. That's the right word, mm -hmm. yeah. And... Um, he ended up uh, working and taking over a kitchen uh, somewhere out there in San Diego, I think. And then he had to fire his pastry chef for whatever reason. And <laughs> so he, he took over. Up, yeah, and he now he's one of the top ten pastry chefs in the U.S. Wow. He's, yeah, he's, 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 he's all started with that. the Olympics. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so I got to meet him too. He's uh, 
he's a, a driven seems like a very driven individual um but but very nice you know and the food was fantastic at both places mm. rich does these specialty tater tots there the our gang eatery is a very fun type place it's uh you know they do kind of a fun riff on food so it's okay. it's, it's always a real relaxed atmosphere it's, it's great you should all go so that was fun and then um after i got back from that uh my friend barry or uh, as some of you might know him gummy but gummy but <laughs> yeah. gummy but barry came uh, to visit we're kind of we're kind of seeing each other we're seeing how it goes uh-huh. He lives far away. Hi, Barry. So we if came in watching. for uh, we came in for for about four days. Yeah, three nights. I feel bad I didn't get to see him. I know. I feel bad too. It was a weird weekend. Yeah, that you were away, but um, but we, we had a really good time. We went downtown to Houston and we went to the art museum. We bumped into David there actually and said hi to him. Okay. And uh, we went to a couple of the exhibits they had on on going on. Um, which is weird because one of them was a Rembrandt exhibit and they had, I think, one Rembrandt in the whole, <laughs> in the whole exhibit. Um, yeah. and, but they did have Van Dykes, who's one of my favorite painters. Uh, so that was cool. I, I'm into still painting. Um, he does a really good job with that. Still, so, still, still life. Type, still life, yeah. yeah. Still life. So um, then we went and just kind of toured around. We went to uh, the Galleria showing them all and i was gonna take them by the water wall but oh. we never got a chance because we ended up going to dinner with ray and um and and gene and and patrick and and uh jerry and jerry oh so okay. that was kind of fun but um while we were <laughs> we were trying to leave the mall we got accosted by this like real effeminate gay israeli dude from uh he's he's at one of the kiosks selling oh the dead sea salt the dead sea, whatever. okay I mean, he came over. He's like, "Hey, bears, come over here!" <laughs> and grabbed us. And like, Barry's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Okay, what? whatever." He's like, "Sit down, sit down, my bear." He's rubbing my belly. He's like, oh "He's like, give me a hug." He's like, "Oh, hold your hand out." He dumps like a whole thing of salt in my hand. I'm like, "What the hell?" I was like, "We really gotta go." He's like, "No, no, 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 just rub your hand." He starts spraying it with water. I'm like, "Okay." And then like, it really. I looked in the bucket after after he sprayed it all off, and there's it was just dark and then my hands were clean but I, they never felt so smooth before oh really but then he tried to sell us all this stuff and it was like oh it's only 89 dollars i'm like uh, <laughs> you're talking about someone's never spent like 10 dollars on on a uh, beauty product in his life okay uh, so you're gonna have to come down from there 89 yeah he wanted to i don't know he's trying to sell me all kinds of stuff but he was really funny so i bought one thing and I got him down like half price of what he was trying to oh, sell. Oh, you were able to negotiate? Yeah, I okay. negotiated that shit down. Wait, but... you were at the mall? Yeah, it was you were at the like, mall. Yeah, you were, you were able to negotiate? Like, okay. Yeah, well, it was like in one of the kiosks. <laughs> the kiosk yeah. ones, okay. Yeah, that, that, you can, you can that guy, I forget his name now, <laughs> but believe. he was pretty funny. If you ever walk by um, the guy in, uh, that's doing the Dead Sea Salt, he's he's a pretty funny guy. So, hmm. But he, was, he kept hugging me and Barry and... Really? Yeah, yeah, wow. was, was, we, oh, didn't know, we didn't know what to make of them. We were bears in a mall. It was it was pretty funny. The girl that was working there was just like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Wow. So so that was uh, it's been an experience for Barry, huh? Okay. Yeah, and then um, we threw together kind of a last minute dinner hot tub party and uh, made a big feast. Um, thank you for everyone that was coming. We had almost everyone that I invited came, which is weird, last minute like that. But um. We had nothing to do. Maybe I guess. there's nothing to do in Houston anymore. So they came out, came to hang out, <laughs> hang out in uh, Outer Mongolia here, yeah, in Lower Dallas. That we live hot in. tub party, hot naked tub. Uh, party. Most people were naked. Only nice. one did not. Another fellow Asian of yours. Oh really? Yeah, the Wayne. Lame. Didn't get naked. He, he wore a little bikini. Oh. I was like, okay, whatever. He's not gonna go nude. I don't, I thought that was kind of funny because I always thought he was just whatever. Mm-hmm. But. What a busy weekend. It's okay. Wow. Wayne's not my type, so I didn't care. <laughs> if it was a bear, I would have given him more shit. I'd be yeah. like, come on, take, come on, it, take off. it off. Take it We're off. all naked. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Wayne. I was like, eh. Whatever. It's just Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my week. And then uh, I literally just got back in from overseas today. Okay. So that was fun. Well, yeah. So... I guess we both got back <laughs> from yeah, our from yeah, our trips. We're, yeah, yeah, and so if we're a little zombie-like on the podcast, we're sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we're kind of tired. Uh, I could I could see now why uh, you know Ray Ray's not here. Like I said, because he's still in the process of moving. He's really tired right now. 
and you'll probably get uh, uh, come back next week or so. Okay, so one of the topics here is uh, is actually a a death in the, oh. in the comedian. Uh, Are we gonna play "She Died, You Win" or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too familiar with her actually. Do you know, oh, no? familiar with Phyllis Diller? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, um, so Phyllis, uh, I'll do I'll, I'll do this one. So sure. Phyllis Diller, famed for her self-deprecating jokes, wild wardrobe, and overstated laugh, made her comedy uh, club debut at 37. Wow, hmm, she was pretty late. old. Yeah. Pretty old when, and uh, enjoyed a long career in clubs, movies, and uh, TV. Diller, in, in TV, in TV. So Diller, whose career in comedy clubs spanned nearly 50 years. And uh, she died in her sleep on Monday. I guess it was last week, right? Um, at, uh, he was she was uh, 95, mm-hmm. and uh, at her longtime home home in uh, Brentwood, and uh, that was um, um, information from uh, her agent. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, known for her ad- ad- adept uh, timing and uh, and precisely structured jokes, Diller took pride in being able to deliver as many as 12 punch lines per minute. Wow, that's. Have you? Uh, did yeah. you really? Uh, she was. She was throw it back way? to the old kind of comedians where they actually set up their jokes and had a, a real punchline, as oh. opposed to the ones that just kind of tell a funny story now. Yeah. So she's yeah she was oh. you know pretty big in her time. Okay. She'd show up on a lot of uh, movies and doing like small little roles here and there a lot. Mm. Yeah, I like liked her. Yeah. Okay. I think I've seen her before in some some movies. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess well, we lost another comedian. Yeah, so, yeah, sad. Yeah. When it comes to comedians, though, I like, I like, Wanda Sykes among, and uh, of course Margaret Cho. I like I get, when Wanda Sykes doesn't get too political. Cause sometimes she she goes very very political. Oh, she does. Yeah, okay. but otherwise I like her. Yeah, I like her voice. It's very distinct. Yeah. Okay. Bear Decadence, New Orleans, August thirtieth to September third, in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Bears are moving forward at a rapid pace and promise to deliver yet another great weekend of fun and frolicking in the Big Easy by bringing you Bear Decadence 2012 Apocalypse Survivor Bear. Please visit the website for more information on all of the events and to purchase your passes. So go to theneworleansbears.com Okay, it's time for the geek the, Sorry, the gay, the geek and the bizarre. How can you this? A couple now. of months. We only started getting the geek and bizarre for a few months. Really? Yeah. It's been there as long as I've known you. Oh, really? I think, I think so. Okay, we started somewhere sometime uh, last year, I think. Okay. All right, so go ahead with the gay. Oh, I'll do the gay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a really cool one. Uh, the first openly gay United States general was sworn in, uh, General Tammy Smith. Uh, she's a brigadier general. first... First, let wrong off the general ladder. I thought um, it was Tammy Faye. Tammy it's Faye. T- Tammy no, Faye. Oh God. She's not even game as general. Oh. Oh I'm just picturing her in uniform right now, and it's oh. like the scariest thing I ever think. Thought no, 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 not Tammy Faye. Tammy no. Smith. Tammy Smith. Anyway, um, she was promoted August 10th at a ceremony in Arlington, where and when her wife Tracy Hepner was the one who pinned her star onto her uniform. Wow. So um, while the Department of Defense positions that orientation as a private matter, participating with family and traditional ceremonies, such as the promotion, is both common and expected of a leader, Smith said in a statement. Looking at the photo of Tracy's joy, she pins the star on my shoulders, a memory that will imprint my heart forever. Her support keeps me army strong. Mm-hmm. Smith's promotion came just a, under a year after the repeal of the controversial Clinton era policy, don't ask, don't tell, which prohibited gays from openly serving in the military. So congratulations, congratulations. to uh, General Smith. Uh, that's pretty cool. Tammy Faye yeah. Smith. Tammy, F- Tammy Smith. Okay. Tammy Smith. Too. So yeah, I, I guess it's. Re- it's. I guess this is a good sign. Yeah. It's a very good sign that uh, you know that a general, a very prominent one. Is uh, openly gay and she, you know, she got promoted. It, yeah, not only they also did it at the um, at Arlington Cemetery. They have a, a, an exhibit at the base there uh, for women in the military, and they did it there. Mm-hmm. So well, that's good. Kind of two things. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the geek. Just, this is something you got. It's just, yeah. just re- this is this, is this is this is. A very important to to uh, people who fly right now. So could we fly from London to New York in an hour? 
That sounds awesome. Yes. So NASA yeah, yeah, scientists right. test uh, 4,500 miles per hour hypersonic jet. Nice. Mm. So Ardu's journey, journeys from uh, holiday makers, could be a thing of the past if the technology takes off. A uh, trip across the Atlantic from London to New York would take the plane just one hour, traveling at five times the speed of sound. That's yes. fast. That's really fast. <laughs> Today, the cutting edge craft will be dropped from a B-52 bomber over the Pacific Ocean in its latest test. It will be uh, flown from uh, Edwards Air Force Base in the Mojave Desert in, in California, attached to the bomber's wing. So, the jet will then be dropped from almost 50,000 feet near the Point Mugu promontory. promontory. A uh, rocket booster will ignite and speed it up uh, to about Mach 4.5. And if all goes well, the aircraft's engine will take over from there, pushing the speed for more than Mach 6 and lifting the craft to 70,000 feet. And the mission, the mission will only last for 300 seconds. So this is really much just a, a test run they did just to achieve hypersonic flight. Right. But then it says here that, you know, the plane will, will, will definitely crash into the sea, but they just want to see the proof of concept that it would work. I guess that's is, what they're is doing. Is it supposed to crash? Yeah. So, so after, the, after this test, historic test, the plane will crash into the sea and there are no plans to recover it. So oh. <laughs> they don't want to recover it anymore. Wow. Um, you know, um, there's been rumors for a while now that some of the uh, UFOs seen over over that area of the country have been tests such as this. Ah, yeah. then it crashes and they don't recover. Okay. An Air Force friend of mine told me one time that um, the technology that you see actually in the military, the, the latest technology planes, the planes that are supposed to be the highest technology everything, are actually 10-year-old technology and that They've got something even, even more advanced than that in the works. And of course, it says secret. Yeah. I bet yeah. it's just oh, a yeah. secret. Highly, they don't want highly, highly, uh, so, highly yeah. uh, classic. Said, yeah, he told me that, that it's actually old technology by the time it actually becomes the, the latest thing. So that's pretty neat. Probably same as barcode readers and and uh, SSD and uh, solid state drives maybe for computers. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what's our... Oh, wait, wait. Uh, implications implications of a hypersonic jet can you imagine me going back to manila in about three hours i can do that right that would be really neat it's just like you know it's just like a uh, a trip to new york these days it would, hey i'm going i'm going to manila i'll see you in three hours <laughs> something That's, like that that'd be awesome there's no stop so over hard to wrap my mind around that I actually know. especially since i just got off the 10 and a half hour flight I know, That right? was delayed two hours. It was a long day. Ten <laughs> hours. But yeah, this would be great, especially uh, for, yeah, tourism. And it's going to be a big um, big boost in tourism, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the bizarre. I find this bizarre, not really bizarre, but it's kind of weird that they would include these words in the dictionary. So would you? Would you, uh, Do you want me to read Dave? it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says... Yeah. Uh, Adding F-bomb to dictionary makes for an aha moment. So we really can't give you the full definition of one of the newest additions to the dictionary. Not that one is needed. Everyone knows what an F-bomb is. Mm -hmm. But if you need to look up what it means, you can now in the 2012 update of the Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, which describes the word as a lighthearted and printable euphemism. It was one <laughs> of the 15 new listings announced Tuesday. Among them are bucket list, gassed, an Oprah Winfrey signature phrase, aha moment. Wow. Um, some of the new words this year provide colorful images, said Peter so Sokolowski. That name sounds familiar. Um, Merriam Webster, editor at large. Terms like man cave, man underwater. Cave. I guess that, oh, that's a mortgage term. Um, earworm and bucket list paint vivid pictures in your mind, he said. They show what English speakers, speakers can be very creative as they describe the world around them. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Do you want to read the rest of it, or yeah, we can oh, just and, go. Um, there's uh, systemic risk 
and underwater, and then there's this year's technology editions of cloud computing and sexting. Sexting. Nice. It's now in the dictionary. The sending <laughs> of sexually explicit messages and images by cell phone. Have you ever sexted anyone? No. Lies. No, not the lies. I deny. No, I've not I sexted anyone. I, I can't. I can't make that same claim. <laughs> Have if any of you want to growl at me, <laughs> sexting. Does that does that um, does sexting include growling, or is that just texting? I well, technically, okay. Technically, they're all binary. They're all data anyway. Mm -hmm. So yes, I guess if yeah, you I are on growl, sexting. you're sexting someone if you're using growler or yeah. scruff. So I guess that's uh, mm. yeah, it's pretty much sexting. Once you once you unlock your pictures. That's yeah. pretty much sexting, I guess. <laughs> is that is it? I guess. Yeah. But guess. yeah, okay. So they used to call it whoring. Whoring? Yeah, maybe. Whoring. Like whoring, whoring yourself out. Whoring yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> now it's sexting. Okay. So uh what 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 are the other words? Um oh co here here are the other added words. Copernic Copernicium. Copernicium? Copernicium, I think. Copernicium. I, I don't know what that is. That an, uh, maybe, is that the new um, element that they found, maybe? Maybe, maybe oh, it is. Sounds like it. Mm -hmm. uh, energy drink, that wasn't in there before? That's no, I guess not. Game changer, gastropub, and mashup. Mm. Hmm. Mashup. Yeah. Mashup is when you make a mash up of music. music. Yeah. All those DJs do that. Yeah, that's right. Like our friend. Uh, DJ Zach in Chicago. DJ Zach. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. DJ Zach. Yeah. And also. Uh, hey Jay. <laughs> what about uh and Sean Mack? And you Sean Mack. A few times now. Mm -hmm. Yep. DJ Zach and Sean Mack. Cool. We're like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> podcast today. Let's try to rhyme the rest of the podcast. Ready? <laughs> Are you uh, like my team, Dirty? <laughs> How do I rhyme it? Uh, <laughs> There's a birdie. There's a birdie. <laughs> I can't rhyme that. Oh, <laughs> I can't go that far. I win. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Nar, my, my team, Dirty, shout out. I want to ah. shout out to all my friends from uh, Dirty. I guess we did a great job at the Game World Series. And uh, although uh, we didn't win the, uh, the tournament, we didn't place really well. But still, it's a great accomplishment that we were able there. We... That we went there and uh, we did really play well. That's the best team I've ever had in uh, softball. So, congrats on that, by the way. Yeah, thank That's you. Pretty, uh, pretty mm -hmm. cool that you guys got to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a few more, John and Joseph from Minneapolis. For thank you for inviting me at your party, and uh, showing all the China pictures that you guys took. And of course, the B Talk boys, Shannon, Jason, Joel, and Kurt. And uh, it's great to chat with you guys and hang out with you, guys and. Uh, you have to have a pictures. like a podcast home and home thing where uh, mm -hmm. you interview them and they interview you. Yeah, That'd I've had fun. them. I had the Shannon and the Jason before in the show. Oh, you have. Yeah, and I, I'd I'd like to get Kurt and uh, Joel before, but I don't know. Mike Mike was telling me that. Why won't I make a uh, you know um, uh, 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 interview them or or have them in the show as a uh, yeah. as a reunion? Which reminds me. Okay, one before before we go, it's. The B Talk Boys have a surprise for you guys, okay? Coming soon, they might have another show. Oh wow! A special, uh, probably a one, one, one uh, comeback show. So, if you are listening to this, show, listening to this, or here watching this right now, yeah. So, uh, you heard it here first, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the reunion of the B Talk reunion, Boys. Reunion, huh? reunion. Um, Okay, so how about you? Any uh, shout outs for your side? Of course, uh, shout out to Barry. Uh, had a wonderful time. Thanks for coming. Hey, Barry. Um, also to uh, to the guys in San Diego, Rich Sweeney and, and uh, Terrence. Uh, thanks for uh, showing me a good time in San Diego up in Hillcrest. Uh, that's their gay community there. So I did not get to go to... Um, Oh, it's that bar that everyone hangs out at. Pex. Pex, yes. You didn't go to Pex. I didn't that's go to the Pex. number one bar no. there. Well, I know. That's what they say. I, I, I was tired. It's a big bear bar. Yeah, really. I had. I did not have a lot of time there. I had to be back up very early. So. Oh. Uh, yeah. How long were you there? I I was literally there for only like thirteen hours. Thirteen hours. Yeah. There's nothing much you can do. Not much. I had wow. dinner. 
went home. Yeah, dinner went home. Yeah. You're such a jet setter. You fly there, I'm going to have dinner and go <sighs> home. It's a strange life, I think, mean, for sure. <laughs> I, uh, it's going to get a lot stranger if that, that plane starts uh, taking off and I'm, I'm flying. I'll be doing like flying to London and back in one day. I can see it. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. So four hour, three hour flights, one hour flights. That'd be I'm nice. mad I never got to go on the Concorde. So this this would be even cooler. Yeah, you you have a choice. Yeah, you, you can ride a Concorde, right? No, they're not flying anymore. Yeah, no more. There's no yeah. more. No, there's but no the, more. the the new Dreamliner is coming out soon. I'm looking forward to that. Seven eighty seven. Mm hmm. Mm. Hopefully, I get to go. Uh, there's talk that I might get to go to either Australia or New Zealand, for any of you listeners out there and down under. Ah. That would be fun. I have a good friend. Uh, Aaron lives in uh um, out in Sydney now. Him and his uh, partner he just got engaged to. He's oh, a really? friend of mine from DC. Okay. So if you're watching Aaron, I'll make sure he watches. <laughs> Shout out Aaron. Shout out to Aaron too. Why not? Let's just keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, who else? Uh, uh, I was thinking. What's good? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Ken. Oh, Ken's here. Ken is here in Houston, he so we might meet him. He's injured. Did you see his injury? I haven't seen his injury. I don't think I want to see blood. I don't think there's blood, but there's a... Uh, I guess he was tubing. There's a tubing injury. Probably because, I don't know, maybe someone's <laughs> dr- drinking a little bit. He's drinking a bit, yeah. And supposedly he almost drowned, and Rich was nowhere to be found to save him. Oh, <laughs> no. Rich and Ken are our friends from Harrisburg. Yes, um, they're Ken's in town. Well, yeah. sort of in town. He's in Katy, he's in, which he's is about like two, two hours away, hour from, away yeah. or something. Really, really far. Yeah. Almost like going to he's Austin. Like, yeah, he's like he's like East Austin. Yeah, east of Austin. <laughs> Just a little bit east of Austin. Yeah, uh, so uh, we hope to see him this week. We will yeah, probably we will. meet him halfway because, you know, how often do you see a friend from uh, Pennsylvania coming yeah. here? And, uh, we got Ken at uh, P-Town, which we still haven't put the pictures up for. Oh, that's right. I haven't posted my, my, my Piton pictures yet. Yes. I've been so busy. What can I say? Married mm-hmm. life is hard. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, you know what we didn't talk about? I, want, I meant what? to bring up. Um, the. I have two Facebook pages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, mentioned, yeah. Yeah, and uh, my best friend's wife, she wants to be friends with me on my gay Facebook page. And I was like, I don't know if that's a great idea. And she's like, why? I love gay Dave. And she's like, I'm, and I'm like, well, okay, but you might see pictures of me you don't want to see, like me in wrestling singlets or, um, you know, Speedo boy shorts and things like that. <laughs> I said, and she's like, I don't care. I don't care about that. I was like, okay. So I was like, I let her be a friend of mine. I said, you know, just, you know, maybe Tommy doesn't want to see this, though. Just, so, you know, be aware, you know. Uh, he might see it too and she's like and so I got a message from my best friend Tommy uh, who's like I heard you were worried that I wouldn't want to see gay Dave stuff and I was like well I I didn't really mean it that way but um, you know I I was I didn't think you wanted to see pictures of me half naked really so I mean he's seen me naked a thousand times but like you know it's weird when he's your straight friend now he knows you're gay and sees you naked Um, (laughs) it's kind of a weird situation yeah uh but I mean, I'm not naked in the pictures, but, um, oh, God. yeah, but anyway, he was like, he's like, I don't, he said something really sweet and I almost cried. It was, it was like, I don't care what I see of you. I, I'm just happy you're living your life the way you should, um, being, you know, who you are. And, uh, I'm, I'm okay with anything that comes along with that. Basically he, he Aww. was, it was really sweet. And I was, I just wanted to mention that today. So shout out to Tommy and, and Aww. They just had a little baby girl. She's my, oh, congratulations! She's my sweetest little baby, sweet little oh. baby. Yeah. So uh, you think? I guess they're gonna see the show now. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> it'll be posted. I don't know. But I'll, I'll tell Jen to watch it. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so shout out Jen if you're watching it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. So I guess that's it. What What are we planning this week? We have to get get dinner oh, with uh, with. We Ken. need to hook up with Ken. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be hard. I have my kids prob- this weekend. This yeah. week. Week, I should say. And then probably help out with Ray, whatever he's... I think he's done already. I feel... Is he, is he a hope? I oh, hope he's done. I hate moving. Yeah, I Ray's still myself. moving. Yeah. Love you, Ray, but... <laughs> moving and me don't go well together. <laughs> is it bad for your back? No, yeah. it's just bad for my uh, mental health. Oh, really? Oh, okay. It's what? like going to Ikea for me. I hate both those things. Oh, really? You I, don't like Ikea? Oh, I hate Ikea. 
Yeah. Wow. You want to put Dave in a bad mood? Take him to Ikea. Take him to Ikea. Yeah, that's one of the things I saw in Minneapolis. Oh, what a big Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we didn't go. We didn't go. Mike and I didn't want to go. All I right. this weird picture of Prince in Ikea just now when you said that. Oh, really? <laughs> How funny would that be? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay. So I guess we're going to close this. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. If you want to contact us, send your emails to show at bearpodcast.com. Or send your voicemails to 206-222-BEAR. That's 206-222-2327. Yes. Send us a, a message and we'll play it on the show. Yes. And uh, subscribe by iTunes and YouTube. And uh, also Vimeo. We also there. We're also there too. And uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. And we'll catch you guys next week. And we'll send many hugs. Mahalo. Wolf, water, bear. Podcast your ass. Wolf, water, bear.